Hello, in this DAR programming video, we are going to start off the classes and objects section of this series. So, which is also known as OOP, double OP, which stands for Object Oriented Programming. That is one of the core fundamentals of coding for any developer today and has been for quite a long time and will be continue and will continue to be one of the core foundations for the future for all programmers as well. So, what is a class and what is an object well they go hand in hand so let me describe what a class is a class is basically a way of grouping variables and functions together that have common functionality take for example a car a car will have wheels could have four could have three potentially could even have two but it's going to have wheels it can have you know you know it, let's say let's think of it in the context of a racing game you'll have you know some sort of speed you have some sort of acceleration property. You'll have methods to be able to actually accelerate it. You'll have methods to move it. It will have, you know, all those, you know, all that stuff. If you have five cars in your game, in your map, for example, there, there might be slight differences. Maybe they have a different color or a slightly different, you know, model, depending on what make and manufacturer and what model number you've chosen for your car. But generally speaking, they're going to be very, very similar in terms of the underlying code. So instead of duplicating the code again and again and again, you create it once, it's like a function almost. You create a function once, you can call it multiple times, and that code is only implemented once, but you get you can run it as many times as you want. Same with a class, but you allow you to have multiple functions as a part of it and multiple attributes. So it's really, really powerful. And an object is just a variable that you create of a class. You know, the way we've done, you know, int i or string i. String is a built-in class and the, you know, this i, for example, would be the object of the string class. So let's create a very simple class. And we are, you need to put it outside of any method. You use the keyword class and the name of it. So I'm going to call this vehicle. Open and close curly braces. In here, you put all of your methods and all of your functions as well. I prefer to put my functions first. So I'm going to say void, drive, open close brackets, and then we put some curly braces and we put, you know, the functionality here. So let's say if I just do a simple print, so say drive, 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 and we can have a variable as well. Maybe we have int speed, and we can have a default speed of, or well, actually I call this max speed, max speed, a default max speed of 60. So if we go to our main now, to create an object of it, we just put the data type. The data type is just the name of the class, that's all it is. Vehicle, then you name it. So I'm gonna call it V1. You put equals new vehicle. So this again is the name of the class. Open close brackets. And now we can do v1 dot drive that method has appeared, and if we run that, it calls whatever functionality is inside here. We can access so the way to access all of its you no know, properties and all of its functions. Sorry, I was meant to put that afterwards. Just that's purely the order that I like to do it in, but you can put it before as well. That doesn't affect the way it runs. To access the properties, just use dot and then the property you want to accept. You can do v1 dot max speed, and we can print that. We could do print there we go. Okay, you might be thinking, you know, still, what is the point of doing this? Let me show you something. If I was to duplicate this and have vehicle two, and what I'm gonna do is v1 dot max speed, I'm going to change max speed to 100 for example, so the so vehicle 1 is a lot faster. I'm going to print out its speed again, but after I've changed the max speed, and then I'm going to print out the max speed for vehicle 2. Look what happens. We get 60, which is the original max speed, that gets changed to 100, but vehicle 2 has a speed of 60. The reason is, all of the properties and attributes of vehicle two are separate to all the properties and attributes of vehicle one. Even though, even though we only have one class, each object has its own set of you know properties. 
So that's really, really cool. If you're making a game, you can have several enemies that have you know, similar functionality, but they can be in their own state doing their own thing at any particular moment. There's a lot more to classes and objects than just this. That's the reason this is going to be a like, nice little section within the series. And there'll be more videos covering all of the individual features of classes and objects. Stay tuned for them. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.